What's going on, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mint. We're going to do a review on the J. Michael Straczynski and John Romita Jr. Spider-Man Omnibus, so stay tuned. All right, guys, before we jump into this, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications every time we drop a new video. We drop videos every single day, whether it's a book review, a statue unboxing, trailer reaction, always something, so make sure you stay uh, subscribed to the channel. Just got done reading this JMS, uh, Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus, and I know that this run has a lot of, has a, uh, a nice warm and fuzzy place in a lot of people's hearts. Maybe it's depending on when you grew up and what era you read, like I love the Clone Saga. But man, this was a difficult read for me to get through, I gotta be honest, I didn't love it. I think that Straczynski's writing uh, was good. It was intriguing. It was uh, emotional. It was funny, and it flowed well. Uh, John Romita Jr.'s art can't say the same. I'm really not a fan of the art style in this book. It does change up on the last arc, and we get stuff from Michael Diodato Jr., who's who's awesome actually. But that story is terrible. So we'll talk a little bit about it. I think I'm going to be able to keep it spoiler free. Uh, Although it's an old story, a lot of people watch these videos to decide, you know, if they're going to buy this omnibus or not. So I'm not going to give any big spoilers, but um, I don't think there's that many to be had anyway. But uh, this is considered Amazing Spider-Man Volume 2. I, I forget exactly what issue, but like in the 400s or so, they ended up renumbering it starting at number one. And uh, it went on for 58 issues. Uh, this picks up the second half of Volume 2 when Straczynski jumped on, issues 30 through 58, and then it continued the original numbering, 500 through 514. I think John Byrne had the uh, first uh, arc of this Volume 2. But anyway, this is where we first get introduced uh, to the character Ezekiel. Now, I've seen this character before, especially um, him and the main villain, Morlin. You get them in the Spider-Verse storyline, which is more recent. But I wasn't aware that this is their first appearances. And I remember seeing Ezekiel in like card sets. And it's like, who is this old guy like sticking to the wall with his big beast looking feet? Like X-Men looking beast feet. Uh, and that just happens to be how John Romita Jr. drew him. But it plays with the idea that there's this spider totem. And that other humans throughout time have been able to invoke themselves with the power of a spider like Spider-Man. It usually has to deal with some type of sacrificial blood ritual uh, and that Spider-Man somehow bypassed that, whether it was destiny or fate or whatever. But uh, Ezekiel is an older guy. He's the head of a big corporation and he was able to get spider powers himself through like the real, the right way or whatever, right? So he comes on the scene. He's kind of like a mentor to Peter and um, Peter doesn't really believe him, but he kind of like hits him with those questions like why did the spider choose you were you always destined to get the powers was it was it the radioactivity or was it just the spider itself like what you know what really caused you to be picked to be spider-man and i don't want to give spoilers at the end of the arc because i don't want to spoil it for those who still want to read this but uh, it matters the fact how spider-man got his powers and how these other people throughout time got those powers and there's kind of like uh a conflict at the end of the arc so we get Morlin Morlin is like a vampire type of character but he basically feeds on the essence of the spider totems and that's how he survives uh in spider-verse later on he ends up doing like a time cop and 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 sucking the life force out of every spider totem throughout the multiverse right but this is his first uh appearance and he um He's super strong, man. He really gives Spider-Man a run for his money, and it's a pretty epic battle. Um, at this point in time, uh, Spider-Man and Mary Jane are kind of separated. She is in California doing her terrible acting roles, like uh, damsel in distress roles to like the Incredible Lobster Man and stuff like that. And um, Aunt May, uh, this is the run where Aunt May finds out that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, and like it has lasting consequences. She has to deal with it. And although it was kind of necessary, I, I think some some part of this run that I didn't like is that very heavy on the Peter Parker, Aunt May, Mary Jane stuff, and not as much on the Spider-Man stuff as I would have liked, right? Uh, 
Peter Parker ends up becoming a substitute teacher, teaching, uh, what is it, biochemistry at the high school, and he takes interest in a lot of children's lives, and it's very extreme. These kids don't have parents, and they live on the streets, but they still go to school, and um, a lot a lot of stuff dealing with that. There's a lot of supernatural stuff in this book, like there's a team up with Doctor Strange, which I'm not really a big fan of, like, leave Doctor Strange in the Doctor Strange books, but you have a Dormammu, Doctor Strange book. But it does tie in with um, the overall spider totem stuff. And I think Ezekiel phrases it like, you're dabbling in a lot of supernatural shit. And you're drawing a lot of attention to yourself. And now everybody knows that you have these spider powers and you didn't earn them the right way. And I, I thought that was kind of an interesting take on that. Um, on the whole mythos of Spider-Man. You have a, a couple other like supernatural creatures that come after Spider-Man. One of them is this girl. What's her name? Like Shakira, Chakra, something like that. And her thing is pretty crazy because she goes to the media. She's like made out of like spiders or so. But anyway, she goes to the media and starts saying like uh, crazy things about Spider-Man and how like, I don't know, he got her pregnant or something crazy. It made him look really bad. So we do get the reu uh, reuniting of Spider-Man and Mary Jane. They, they're back together. They're all in New York. Everything's cool with that. The last arc has to deal with this crazy ass Gwen Stacy, um, Norman Osborn story where... Um, <laughs> Damn, this is crazy. So, basically, he gets a letter from Gwen Stacy. She wrote it before she died, right? He gets it, and 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 there's these two assassins that are after Spider-Man. It's like this guy and this girl. How do I even say this? So, basically, you find out that these are kids of Gwen Stacy, and it's heavily implied that, damn, are these Peter Parker's kids? But Peter Parker's like, yo, I, me and Gwen Stacy never had intercourse so i'm like what you were he was so into this girl but they never even you know what i'm saying and it ends up being that like she cheated on peter parker with norman osborne and he got her pregnant with twins that had accelerated growth and birth because of his serum that made him the green goblin i think that's a lot of that in a nutshell i think is why a lot of people disliked the last arc of this run and that's probably spoilerish, but it was just crazy and stupid to begin with. But that's how the arc ends. Um, I, I've always said on this channel, and same with Manimal, I can get through bad art if the writing is good. And that's how I got through this. Although it, it was a turn off, and, 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 and a lot of the, the Parker, Aunt May, Gwen's, uh, Mary Jane stuff did make it to where I didn't want to continue to read this, and it was kind of a chore. So that being said, this is not a book I would recommend if somebody was like, yo... I want to get into Spider-Man. What's a good Spider-Man omnibus? This isn't one that I would recommend. Although, I mean, read it and, and see for yourself, but it wasn't one of my favorites. It does have the Spider-Man 911 issue, uh, which is issue 36, I believe. Uh, and that was a kind of a gun-wrenching issue. It basically was pr uh, published right after the attack on uh, the Twin Towers, and it kind of made that canon in the Marvel 616, and... It was a pretty emotional issue, but I think that's about it. Uh, you had a lot of cool covers by uh, J. Scott Campbell, although they should have used um, issue 50, man, instead of this issue for the cover, which it was originally solicited as. This doesn't even look like J. Scott Campbell. Oh, and the reason why you see uh, all these villains and him fighting all these villains as well, it happens during that uh, Doctor Strange Dormammu story, and basically like uh interstellar style he, he goes through time and kind of witnesses all his villain battles he's kind of got to fight all his battles over again and it's pretty cool because they're drawn with like updated art but it's it plays very close to the original uh issues so you get like him fighting the lizard and sandman and the issue where he's pinned by the machinery in the water and he's got to lift himself up so you kind of get that drawn from a different perspective uh, we'll flip through the book now. We'll probably see some of those um, panels. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about The Amazing Spider-Man by J. Michael Straczynski. All right, so here's a quick shot of the dust jacket again. And here's the spine. I think it's the... No, it's not the only white spine for Spider-Man Omnibus. There are Tangled Web and Superior Foes. Here are all the covers on the back. Again, this one is... Man, that sh they should have went with that one for the Omni. And here's the inside. 
wraparound cover on the actual hardcover. It's a cool wraparound cover. I can see why they went with it. Although, this scene doesn't have like a lot to do with the whole story. So, I don't know. It's cool. Let's flip through. Alright, so... Now, sometimes the art is not that bad. Like, looking right here, the artwork is not that bad, but, uh, I don't know. John Romita just has this very blockhead way of, of drawing that I don't love. And I don't love the texture that they do on the Spider-Man costume throughout the whole run. Like, it's shiny or something. There goes Moreland. was Ezekiel. Let me see if I can get that panel of Ezekiel that I always, I always notice where he's like, it's like on a chimney stack or something. And he always calls Peter P. Hey, what's up, P? I'm like, this ain't no motherfucking P. Uh. <laughs> Master P reference for y'all. So yeah, here's the 911 issue. It has the all black cover and. The big scene of Ground Zero is pretty emotional. This is one of like the students that he helps out. Attention teachers and students. I always thought it was weird how Peter is like always like calling his aunt like hey sexy lady and like picking her up. Like I would never do that with my old grandma of an aunt. A little much. That's funny when Aunt May finds out that Peter Parker's Spider Man, she like starts writing to all the newspaper publications and trying to tell them how her nephew's a good boy <laughs> or Spider Man's good, you know? Oh, yeah, he had this like Doc Ock versus like a new Doc Ock. I didn't even remember that. Here's like the new Doc Ock. That was whack. He goes with the Doctor Strange stuff. And here's that, that female supernatural character I was talking about. She goes into human form and then starts like bashing Spider-Man on the news. Which is pretty funny. This is her right now. It kind of sucks because he's already on bad terms with Mary Jane, so it's like, he goes another one of the supernatural creatures. Yeah, I think it was like three of them all together or something like that. These things come in threes. And Peter really is embracing like the spiders in this book, which is pretty cool, right? Like, he is the Spider-Man. Oh, the Digger. This was like a weird kind of one-off. Basically like these, this mob enforcers killed like this family at a mob meeting and buried them in like this chemical tested desert hole and I don't know they ended up merging to become this one guy I don't know it's kind of crazy Peter MJ action <laughs> alright alright this was cool. The mindless ones. I remember that from like Journey into Mystery stuff. So here's what I'm talking about. This is kind of recreating Amazing Spider-Man 4 when he's first fighting the Sandman and he's kind of going through time and fighting all these battles. He's, he's seeing himself get bit by the spider again. You know, he almost considers... Uh, you know, preventing himself from getting the spider bite. He sees himself in the future, very like uh, into the Spider Verse kind of stuff. No, oh, that's for issue five hundred. Yeah, fighting the Vulture from ASM two, the Lizard from ASM six, Electro from nine, Mysterio from what thirteen, and then of course this scene I was talking about. I think that's like. I forget what issue that was. 
So then we start introducing the Gwen stuff here, and that comes that comes later. Now Mike Diodato, his art was was sick, man. Let me let's go to that. So he goes to Ezekiel with his big Henry uh, McCoy type feet, right? This is like the type of artwork that I just don't like. <clears throat> Alright, so here's the uh, Mike Diodato stuff. You can see the artwork way better. I like how he does the spider with the eye on the mask. Look, he's rocking that Nokia 2, that brick. The artwork gets better and the story gets shittier at the end. So it's just so crazy. You're telling me Gwen Stacy had a fling with Norman and he got her pregnant and she went and had kids while she was in Paris. Like, what? That was kind of crazy. All right, that's pretty much it, man. See, here they compare. Okay, right here. All right, guys, that's the review on this book. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helps you make a decision on whether it's whether or not it's something that you want to pick up. But again, just because I didn't like it, you know, doesn't mean that you won't like it. And I'm surprised because I usually like everything. So this is one one of the few times where you know I didn't really love it. But let me know what you think about the run in the comments below. Why did I not like it? Was it because I didn't read it when it first came out? I mean, this is probably about 18 years old by now, uh, 17, 18 years old. Um, like I mentioned in the beginning, make sure to subscribe to the channel, y'all. We, we just hit 27,000 subscribers, and you guys helping this channel grow is just going to bring more good content to you all. So uh, we appreciate the support, and you guys stay minty fresh. Peace.